Yet another former Trump advisor is out with a self-serving book about their time in the White House. Meanwhile, the committee investigating the attempted coup on January 6th interviewed Trump's former attorney for more than nine hours. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. There have been a flood of books from former Trump advisors since he left office, and while most of them have been dishonest and self-serving, there's one coming out soon that I think has the potential to be refreshingly candid and revealing, and, oh wait, never mind, it's Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne Conway is the author of a brand new book, Here's the Deal, and she joins us now. Sorry, but the person who famously coined the phrase alternative facts does not get to cash in on a book, given that there's not a single word of it we should believe. I bet even the cover is a lie. By Kellyanne Conway, that probably means her real name is something like Connie Ann Kellyway. <laughs> this book is also called Here's the Deal, which should be an automatic red flag, because usually when someone says those words, they've been caught in a lie. Gary? Are you sexting with your coworker? What? No, why? Because on your phone, there's a notification that says you have a new sex. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. <laughs> I thought it was the new iPhone update and I had no choice. Also, isn't here's the deal a Joe Biden thing? Is she trying to troll us all by naming her book after a thing Joe Biden famously says? Here's the deal. 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 What's she gonna... Call our next book. Look, Jack, get your facts straight. Come on, man. My time is Barack Obama's vice president. If you ask me, there's really only one thing Kellyanne Conway should be remembered for. Her snide response to a question about COVID being contained in March of 2020. You talked about how the administration initially had this contained, but during that time, why didn't the administration send out more tests and work to get hospitals prepared? I mean, even today, the state of Florida is saying they can't test everyone per the administration's guidelines because they don't have enough tests. So you're asking a couple different things there. I'll, I'll try to just give some facts. Uh, the, the HHS secretary said this morning that we're ramping up. We're ramping up but with the commercial now? labs. Why didn't they do it while it was contained? Get ahead of it. It is being contained. And do you not think it's being contained? Congrats, Kellyanne, you were right. It was contained in March 2020. COVID quickly fizzled out. Hydroxychloroquine and horse paste worked and we never heard of it again. <laughs> Toilet paper was free and plentiful. No one was locked in their homes for a year and I kept doing my show in a suit and tie with a haircut and a full unmasked audience. That's me from yesterday's show. It was so good. We did a closer look about the first year of Trump's second term and how he has a 98% approval rating after successfully containing COVID, winning the snowboarding gold medal at the Olympics. <laughs> and rapping with Dre and Snoop Dogg at the Super Bowl halftime show. My name is Trump and I'm here to say, I made COVID go away. Wait, 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 nope, I got that all wrong. None of that happened, right? COVID is still raging, Trump lost the election, and I spent a year in lockdown swatting away wasps and growing out my hair like old Loki. <laughs> oh, wait, oh God, oh God, you know what that means? This has been, Seth accidentally slips into a parallel universe. Wait, is this the timeline where Wally has luscious golden locks? You know it, baby. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna quote from the book because there's no reason to believe anything in it. Conway was such a prolific and shameless liar that we shouldn't take a single thing she says at face value. In fact, that's how we should treat anyone in the GOP who backed Trump's big lie about non-existent fraud in the 2020 election. Like, for some reason, news outlets keep inviting on Republican politicians to repeat the brazen and unhinged lie that the 2020 election was somehow tainted. Yesterday on CBS, Florida Senator Rick Scott, who objected to the certification of Pennsylvania's electoral votes on January 6th, even after the violent mob stormed the Capitol, implied that there was fraud in the election with very little pushback. There's clearly people that are still concerned about what happened in 2020, and they would like the facts to come out. Um, and they and they want to they want to know that? what happened, why it happened. Well, they want to know they want to know that exactly what happened. If we, you know, were there problems? Exactly what happened? Uh, they'd like to know that. But also, they you know they also want to make sure we win in 22. So you know they they want to make sure that you know we're going to make sure their vote's not diluted. So I think you have to you have to talk about you know making sure people understand what happened in 2020, but also make sure you know they know that you're going to focus on making sure that 2022 Just is a you know is a fair election. What do you mean they want to know what happened? You know how many audits and recounts we've had? Does everyone 
need to get a turn going through all the ballots with a microscope so they can personally confirm that the 2020 election was legit? Honey, uh, what's all this? Uh, there are ballots from Georgia. I guess it's my turn to verify the results. But honey, you don't know anything about elections. That's what I tried to tell them, but they said it was my turn. <laughs> we know what happened. Georgia reaffirmed Biden's victory three times, and even a Republican-sponsored audit in Arizona conducted by a group called the Cyber Ninjas confirmed Biden's win there. And if you can't trust a group called the Cyber Ninjas, who can you trust? <laughs> Cyber Ninjas sounds like the name of an NFT that originally sold for $10,000 and now is going for five bucks on eBay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cyber Ninja with an eye patch is now worth like a million too. And look, I'm not saying I own the one without an eye patch. I'm just saying, is the eye patch one really so much better? In fact, the Republican search for voter fraud was such a bust that Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick offered a reward for proof of voter fraud. And one of the very few cases that surfaced was a Republican in Pennsylvania who used his dead mother's ballot to vote for Trump. So Pennsylvania's Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, who just won the Democratic primary for Senate in Pennsylvania last week, said at the time that he would accept Patrick's reward in the form of a gift certificate to regional convenience store sheets. The fraud that we know is that has occurred in Pennsylvania in this cycle is a, <clears throat> a registered Republican in Luzerne County trying to vote for Trump with his dead mother's ballot. Other than that, no, we have not witnessed any uh, voter fraud here in Pennsylvania. I want my reward. Um, you know, he wanted voter fraud, and <clears throat> from one fellow lieutenant governor to another, it's like, you know, I, he can pay me in sheets, uh, gift cards, that would be fine. And uh, the bottom line is, is like, you know, my dude wants voter fraud, I, del I delivered in Pennsylvania, because that is the one lone case of voter fraud documented right now, as of, as of this airing. By the way, if you don't know about sheets, not outside of New York, it's the only place you can go to buy mouthwash, fuzzy dice, a 12-inch sub, and a six-pack of Keystone Light at the same time. <laughs> and yeah, if you want to quietly slip an adult magazine in there, go for it. It's not porn. Sheets don't sell porn. It's something tasteful that you can enjoy with your sub. And by the way, I realize I'm stepping into the middle of an extremely fraught rivalry here between Sheets and Wawa. I have an allegiance to Pittsburgh, but my staff is packed with people from Jersey, Philly, and worst of all, Delaware. They all... <laughs> they all insist Wawa is better than Sheets, but I'm the host, so I get to decide, and to fans of Wawa, I simply say... <laughs> Anyway, back to Fetterman. My favorite part of his demand that Patrick pay him a reward money was a tweet he sent to Patrick that ended with, P.S., the Cowboys blow. <laughs> and even if you're a Cowboys fan, you have to admit, he's a man of his convictions, because when he asked about that tweet on CNN, he did not back down. Well, let's, let's first establish the Cowboys do, in fact, blow. <laughs> At the end of the day, this man is a unifier. He may have driven a wedge with this Sheets endorsement, but the whole state can come together to agree that the Cowboys <laughs> blow. Also. I appreciate Fetterman's willingness to use football analogies, like when he said that demanding an audit of the election was the equivalent of demanding to be added to the roster of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I just want your viewers to understand that, that the people that are involved in these kinds of audits in Pennsylvania are not the sharpest knives in the GOP drawer. No one's taking this seriously. I, I could issue a letter on my office's letterhead to the Pittsburgh Steelers saying, I demand I be installed as the starting left tackle for the upcoming season. And, and that could generate some news stories, but it's not going to go anywhere. And neither is this. And this is coming from a guy who, of all politicians, has the best chance of actually becoming the starting left tackle for the Steelers. Dude is six foot nine. But he's certainly right about one thing. The people involved in these scam audits are not the sharpest knives in the drawer, which brings us, of course, to a straight-up spoon, Rudy Giuliani, who, <laughs> who always looks like he's surprised to find out he's Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> oh, no, not that one, I hope. Rudy looks like he just challenged Fetterman to a bar fight and then realized how tall Fetterman was when he stood up. Oh, never mind. You can keep talking to my wife, big guy. Besides, she's my cousin. It's unnatural. <laughs> Anyway, Rudy was, of course, integral to the failed attempt to overturn the results in various swing states, including specifically in Pennsylvania. And as a result, the committee investigating the coup conducted a virtual interview with him last week that lasted for hours. Some big news from the January 6th committee. Tonight, in the past hour, we have learned that President Trump's personal lawyer, former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, testified today before the 1-6 committee. NBC News confirms that Giuliani testified virtually for approximately nine hours. Nine hours? I mean, I guess it makes sense. The dude was involved in almost every aspect of the coup, so there's a lot to discuss. Either that or he 
kept having technical difficulties. Excuse me, Mr. Giuliani, you have your thumb over the camera. No, that's just my face. It looks like a thumb with eyes drawn on it. <laughs> Let's not forget Rudy once butt-dialed a reporter, left a voicemail for the wrong senator, and has repeatedly shown off evidence implicating himself in Trump's crimes on his various devices during TV interviews. It's all here, right here. Uh, the, the first call from the State Department. Here's Kurt saying, great, I will tell Yermak and he'll visit with you there, thanks. Mr. Mayor, how was your meeting with Andre? Do you have time for a call? Best, Kurt. And they were all over me, you know, asking me to do it. I was happy to do it. The feds didn't need to knock down his door. They just had to watch Fox News. Hey, can we get one of our forensic guys to zoom in? Yeah, no, there it is. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just shocked Rudy was able to make it to an Apple store without confusing it for a fruit stand. Oh, I'll take that yellow phone right there. Boss, I got big news. <laughs> we won on appeal. Also, boss, I got something to tell you. They definitely put my head on someone else's body. <laughs> boss, can we go to the full frame again? I think that this is definitely a case where my head has been put on a different person's body. <laughs> Sometimes it's seamless and you can't tell, but this is clearly not my body, boss. We had to find a picture of a body that was holding a phone that looked like a banana. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, Republicans are very much still engaged to this day in preparing for the next coup, which is why they're still so invested in lying about or covering up the last one. The GOP nominee for governor in Pennsylvania is a full-on pro-insurrectionist who wanted to overturn the state's electors in 2020. We can't allow Republicans who supported the big lie back into the political mainstream because whatever they pretend to be in the streets, Republicans are still opposed to democracy in the... Sheets. <laughs> um, guys, that was not the easiest closer look for me to get through. Not only is what we're talking about very serious, but uh, Wally's had the wig on the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you think back, the wig was really early. Uh, the wig was really early in the closer look. And, um, <laughs> and so, like, while I'm talking about, you know, again, I'm talking about things that are really going to affect us, also in the back of my head that whole time, I'm like, why don't you take the wig off? <laughs> I'm going to ask him during the commercial break. I'll let you know if it was a good answer. We'll be right back with Billy Crystal. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever if you're watching this online. You can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.